Hello, everyone, and welcome back to New York Comic Con. I'm your host, Katie Wilson, with Sci-Fi Wire, joined by my lovely co-host, Courtney. I'm Courtney Enlow. I'm the associate editor for Sci-Fi Wire Fangirls. Woo! Awesome. Woo. <laughs> Guys, I, I, I have to say, Courtney and I are nerding out a little bit right now because we, we are, are sitting up here. properly fangirling. <laughs> I, we, we are fangirling because we are sitting up here with Disney royalty right now. Please give it up for Jody Benson and Paige O'Hara. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Oh this God. is so exciting. I mean, you guys have been to tons of conventions throughout the years and have met lots of fans. But what is that experience like, just getting to be here and to <laughs> feel that energy? Um, it's overwhelming, I think, for, for both of us to meet each fan one at a time and really look at them and make a connection with them and hear their story. That's what we love. We love to know why you care about these characters and why you care about our films. And we love to hear what makes you tick exactly. with our movies. And it, it just brings us tons and tons of joy. And who'd have thought after all these years? I mean, that, that you guys still love our movies. Yeah. <laughs> and we were really appreciative of that. Yes. That we're very grateful. We, we are. are very grateful. Paige yeah. and I have been friends for... Uh, we're getting close to 40, 40 years, years oh, that we've been wow. friends. Um, yes. So Paige and, and I are dear friends. And of course, Ariel and Belle are precious friends. And so we have a lot of fun when we get to do these together and with our husbands and, you know, just make this connection with all of you. We appreciate it. What kind of things do you hear from fans who are so deeply impacted by these characters? Because these characters mean so much to so many people. Well, you know, it was the, the Howard Ashman and Alan Menken era, you know, and then, yeah. thank you. And Howard Ashman, I, I'm sure most of you know that because you love Disney so much, but Howard's uh, personality and love and guidance of, were totally Ariel and Belle. Um, they were both in some ways Howard in many ways, <laughs> really, they were. and. Uh, so we were just very blessed to, to have the opportunity to work with him. And um, it's very special. Yeah, I feel like it's such a magical experience when kids get to go to the park and get to meet the princesses face to face. But what experiences do you guys have when you get to meet a kid and they're dressed as Ariel, as <laughs> Belle, and then they hear your voice for the first time? Because, I mean, I'm not a kid, but I would freak out too. <laughs> Uh, you know, we love that. That's what we love about going to these events is that when you guys come up to the table, we have our Kleenex box ready and we can tell when we've got the criers. I see you here in the front. <laughs> yeah. um, when the criers show up and we're about to take a picture, we're like, okay, hold those tears back because you got to look fabulous for that photo. <laughs> and then you can let the waterworks go after that. But I know for, for both for Paige and I, when we see the costumes, I mean, we're taking pictures of the costumes because... They're beyond. I, I'm just, I'm in awe of everything that you guys put together to come up and share with us. And again, after all these years, it's pretty amazing to see that these films mean so much to you. And we really do. We're, we're so grateful. You know, we, we still have a job and, and we're grateful. <laughs> the longest job in Disney That's history. Right. <laughs> a job neither one of us expected that no. would be lasting 30 plus years. So. No, we didn't. I would love to hear some of your memories from making these movies and the first time you played these characters because I have to tell you, Jody, I had taped on VHS off TV, The Making of the Little Mermaid. And you talked about how when you sang part of your world, you had to be in the dark. And I would love to hear more stuff like that about how you actually really made these characters happen. Well, like Paige said, everything that we do in the movie and our recording is Howard Ashman. I mean, we were, we were very smart that all we did was do exactly what he told us. He gave it to us on a silver platter. We imitated him. I copied him. Every lyric, every sound, every nuance, every breath is Howard Ashman. So for that... We take no credit for that. Um, but I had been recording Part of Your World for about seven and a half hours, and at the end of the seven and a half hours, it was the wrong microphone. So they said, we're so sorry. We're going to have to do this all oh, over again. Man. And I was like, it's okay. You know, my, my famous thing is, no problem. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. So Howard's like, okay, we've got like two passes at this because we're coming down to the end of the clock. So I'm going to turn off the lights, and Jody, you're going to do this like you're doing a Broadway show. 
So that's what we did. We turned off the lights, and that, again, that was Howard's idea, not mine. And um, I just did what I was told. So, yeah, it was it was a fun day. It was a crazy that's day, awesome. but it was a fun day. That's awesome. Paige, do you have any stories like that as well? About well, you know, creating? actually, I have one that's more interesting about Angela Lansbury. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. <laughs> the great Angela Lansbury. <laughs> she had been traveling all night and got stuck in another city the night before she was supposed to record with the symphony with us. The score, you know, we're recording live with the symphony. And she came in and Don Hahn said, Angela, no, no, we don't expect you to say you've had no sleep. I mean, in 24 hours and whatever. She said, well, uh, I don't know, I'll give it a try. And she's so amazing. She's like, I don't know, I don't know. And she gets up to the microphone. The 100-piece orchestra starts playing. David's conducting. She sings Beauty and the Beast. Not only to perfection, but everyone in the whole place, would, were, we were all crying. And it's the only take she did, and it's the one that you have in the movie. Oh, wow. So, that's such a fascinating story. Yes. Well, she's, she's one of the greatest Broadway legends ever. I mean, I, we both grew up idolizing her. We saw her on Broadway, and I saw her in Gypsy five times. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. That's incredible. So when you guys do meet fans, do you have, is there a line that fans just are constantly asking you to say? <laughs> yeah, I know mine. <laughs> do, they, do they just ask you to sing all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Um, maybe he's right. Maybe there is something the matter with me. I just don't see how a world that makes such wonderful things could be bad. Oh, I love it. Follow that. I have chills. I have oh, actual chills. I know. <laughs> okay, I'll give you my favorite line. Yes. Gaston, you're positively primeval. <gasps> I literally yes. have that written down as my favorite oh, line. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote down our favorite lines yeah. as well to talk about, and that was that yes. was Courtney's favorite line. Yes. Well, that line also had Howard Ashman all over it. I mean, yes. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's so oh, perfect. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh. I seriously have chills right now. Um, one of my favorite lines is actually from The Little Mermaid, and it's, Daddy, I love him. No. <laughs> oh, say it. Say it. Come on, Jody. <laughs> yes. But Daddy, Daddy, I love him. <laughs> you, know, you never age. I hate you. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> Just keep your eyes closed, Paige. Just keep your eyes closed. Oh, God. I mean, that actually speaks to, you know, Belle and Ariel were, they really changed the way princesses are depicted. They were so independent and spunky and really inspirational to a lot of the girls growing up watching these characters. What does it kind of mean to be part of of that that just changed the way that princesses, you know, they're not damsels in distress. They are... They and are it was bright about young women, time. sick of swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was about time that Disney did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah, well, I mean, before uh, Mermaid was Sleeping Beauty, and of course, you know, 30 years had gone by. So, And they were all brilliant to, in their time period. Right. You need you know? to have them be appropriate for their time period. So I'll get that question now, like, oh, well, Ariel is not as strong as, let's say, the, the current princesses are now. I say, you have to understand that we were in 1989, so we were breaking the mold out of Sleeping Beauty. So we had that time span to grow and to learn. So you can't expect 1989 to be 2019. Right. But for where we were at that moment, it was appropriate and her strength and her, her personality could come through. And we've had so much growth you know, since, since then, which then, we need absolutely. to, it's, it's important to have that. And I love the fact that she paved the way for Mulan, because <laughs> I love Mulan. Oh, so yeah, She good. inspired me a lot. So. Yes, and we're, you know, um, I think for me, one of my favorite things about the princesses are the fact that, you know, they never, they always had a voice, you know, Ariel even lost her voice, but she, she, it still was a good message about how that, you know, women need to find their voice and have a voice. Um, through your experience, what, do, why do you think these characters have resonated so well with fans throughout many years? I, I really think the reason why the longevity, they, it's, the stories are so authentic and they're real and they're vulnerable. But I really honestly think it's because of Howard Ashman and Alan Menken. Because when you take that score and you blend it with Disney magic as far as feature animation, it was that blend that changed the face of animation forever. You have the movie and you have the adaptation of The Little Mermaid, but it's really what Howard and Alan brought to the Disney table and blended these two worlds between Broadway and feature film animation 
that Absolutely. set us off into a whole different, a whole new world. A whole new world. Um, <laughs> but it also, it also, with both of our films, it was, wasn't just that. It was the brilliance of, of Ashman and Mankin, but it was also the fact that every animator, every, every person that worked on it, every musician, every actor, it had that magic thing that only very, well, very ev rarely ever happens, right? Yeah, yeah. And it happened both with Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. where, you know, Belle is also, you know, Mark Henn and Linda Wolverton and Howard Ashman and all these people. Yeah. And that, that formula, that vision that Howard Ashman had came to fruition for both of our films. And sadly enough, he wasn't able to work on Little Mermaid. He, he didn't even see Beauty and the Beast but, uh, in its entirety. Right. Um, but we 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 all know that he kind of was there opening night and saw it. And we, it was in his heart, and and it was, it was his vision for both films, right. and they're there, and they'll be there forever, long yeah. after we're gone. Long after we're gone. Yeah. yeah. And you guys both got to voice your characters in Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet. Yeah. Uh, and you got to join all of the other princesses yeah. for a scene. And we had princess parties. Princess yeah. parties. Please awesome. tell me about these yeah, princess parties and how do we get an invite to one of those? <laughs> well, we, we did. We didn't get to work together. We all work by ourselves, but um, we were able to connect all together at uh, the opening, and we did a press event for D23, and that's yes. where we met a lot of the girls, and then we did opening night together, and so it is. It's a really neat club. It is it's a, a neat very club. special club. All swapping phone numbers, and yep. I love that. We have a little group message between Belle and Ariel and Jasmine. So oh yeah, Linda, Linda little, says she misses you. Text, we'll see you again. We have a little text group thingy yeah. that we do. Sign <laughs> me up for that I group know. chat. <laughs> it really is though, in a very elite club to be a Disney princess is a huge thing. Um, talk a little bit about that experience of being like a Disney princess and what advice do you have for the new guard of princesses and for people like you know, Holly Bailey, who is going to be taking on the aerial mantle too? It's, um, it's funny because like, I, I, I'm sure Paige feels the same way, but for us, I was just going to do a job in LA back and forth. I was doing a Broadway show with Sam Wright, who played Sebastian. And so I just flew back and forth and I had no idea and we weren't going to be revealed who we were. It was just going to roll the credits at the end. And so it wasn't really until about five weeks before that I went on press tour, 22 cities in 20 days. And at that moment, I was kind of like, what's going on with this project? Because for me, I just thought, I'm going in the studio, and I'm going back doing eight shows a week, and no one's ever going to know. You know, we'll never talk about this again. So I had no idea, looking back, that 30-plus years later, we're still gathering and, and talking about this. But... I think the concept of a Disney princess was completely far from my mind because I, I, I truly was just going to do this job and disappear. Um, but looking back now and realizing, oh my gosh, that was something really special, you know, to be able to be in this royalty chain of command. But at the time, I was just had no clue, right. you know, what was going on. So now the expectations, I think, are so much greater that for me, I had no pressure, no expectations, no nothing. But now for these girls coming up, it's kind of like, oh. So my thing to say to them is just relax and enjoy the ride, you know? Definitely whether enjoy lasts, the ride. Definitely. Whether it lasts one yes. day or 30 plus years, it's beautiful. You know, it's a beautiful journey. But I think not having those expectations just leaves it to a, a, that genuine joy of a surprise of what's around the corner, you know? Um, so we, we do have a great group of girls that are coming up now. I'm super excited about Hallie. I have not met her. And I, um, love, I love Emma Watson. So excited I love her. to see the live I wish action. I could adopt her. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait. Can't wait to see what they're going to do, what Robbie's going to do with the live action version. I'm sure it's going to be stunning. And, so the, and, the, and the live TV version. Yeah, yeah. we've got a one night special yeah. with Ali. Ali. We're going to yeah. have tons of fun with that. So. And actually, Robbie Marshall's an old friend of mine. I've yep. known him since he was in college. Yes. <laughs> His first show is in the chorus of Paint Your Wagon when I started it in Pittsburgh. Yes. And I knew he'd be a superstar director back then. Yes. Because he was actually telling the great Jose Ferrer how to fix a scene that wasn't working. And he was <laughs> totally right. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. But I think he's going to give, uh, he's going to be great for Little Mermaid. I, think it's be I really do. I, I do. He's perfect I think director. it's going to be, it's going to be really gorgeous. And it's neat too because, you know, for us that are 
the OGs, whatever that term is, we're OG. <laughs> Did you know that we're OG? Oh, I didn't even know what that meant. I don't know what that is. Original. Original. OG, original, or original. Old girls. So, what? <laughs> I don't know. I think old G is old oh, girl. No, no. Original, original, original. gangster. <laughs> yes. Is that what it means? Okay. Yes. So we are OG. OG. I and like that. And that means original That's gangster. That's cool, honey. What do you think? My husband's standing the kids, over there looking the at me. The kids would like, say they're, they're like, oh, mom, you're the OG. You're the OG. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how many other aerials are at because you're always OG. So I had to figure out what that was. But, you know, we are. And so we love to see our movies come alive in different forms and fashions. Yes. You know, we love that, it's, it's great. But that doesn't negate the fact that the original is always gonna be there. Yeah. And that next generation is gonna enjoy it. You know, cause we're both on our fourth generations now where we have great grandparents enjoying these films with their great grandkids. I mean, how crazy is that? That's amazing. I didn't think we were that old. <laughs> Like 12 when we recorded this. Yeah, we were, I was eight and you were nine. Was, oh, no, yeah, right. When we recorded She's it. just saying that because I'm a few years older than she is. Oh. <laughs> well, you mentioned having the opportunity to voice these characters for so many years. Well, Courtney and I both agree that the Little Mermaid TV show and the Beauty and the Beast sequels do never get talked about, and they're incredible. Do you have any fun stories or memories that really stick out to you from, from those projects? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think um, we did a prequel and then we did a sequel to Mermaid. And I want to say with the prequel, I was pregnant with my daughter. And that was really fun because while I was singing and recording, she was like alive and kicking. She was like, I love that music. Um, so that was really, really fun. And then the TV series was crazy because we did, I don't know, three or four years of it. But I was doing a Broadway show, Crazy For You, at the same time. So I would record during the day for Mermaid, and then I'd go to the show at night. And I just remember being super crazy fun to do two different characters in one day. Yeah, that was fun. Awesome. And we did all that in New York. I think the rest of the cast was in L.A., but I was yeah. doing it in New York. I, it's like, as if doing the leading role in Crazy For You yeah. isn't enough. <laughs> Singing all those Gershwin songs. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God! It was, it was fun. She's it was the fun, rock. She's it was the a rock to Gibraltar. This one. She's the rock. It was a fun time. You know, you just roll with it at that yeah. moment. It was. It was a lot of fun. I love doing the Christmas movie. Yeah. Yes. I loved it. I love the the cast. I love the score. Rachel Portman and I got to finally meet Tim Curry and work with Tim. Yes. Oh my God! And Paul Rubin, who's here. Yes. You know, you said he's here. Yeah. He was adorable. He played Fife. It was a lot of fun. Oh. I love that movie. That's awesome, yeah. And I had to do a, a, a duet with Bernadette Peters. Yeah. Although she was supposed to sing the harmony when we recorded. <laughs> and we walked in right before we recorded. She said, Paige, I can't learn the harmony. Will, will you sing the harmony and I'll sing the main line? <laughs> Unbeknownst to her, I'm terrible at harmony too. <laughs> so I said, oh, yes, Bernadette, of course I'll sing the harmony. And I'm like, oh, my God, what have I done? <laughs> Michael Starobin are in the other room. I says, just here, I'm just singing it in your ear, singing it in your ear. <laughs> Ten minutes later, I'm recording the duet, Changing Parts with Bernadette. Oh, oh that was my really goodness. fun. That's such a cool story. Yeah. My husband got to play opposite her in Into the Woods on Broadway. Lucky guy. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. That's amazing. So I know a lot of people joke that uh, with Marvel and Star Wars and now Fox, that their heroines should get to be Disney princesses, technically. Oh. Do you have any favorite heroines from that group from those groups oh, that you would love to see become that. official she's, Disney she's a Marvel oh freak my God. <laughs> and then don't talk to me about it because I, I don't I don't know <laughs> no, I was begging Seraphim to let me have a little tiny part in Black Widow I absolutely love <laughs> Scarlet so much and she's a big reason why I'm in I'm a kickboxer okay my husband got me going in kickboxing but Scarlet and Mulan are my my idols but anyway no I I love Scarlet and I love all of them. Oh my God! And, and, and Endgame, I cried my eyes out for three and days. We all did, didn't we? With all three of them. I mean, <laughs> as we all know. But. What characters do you think would be best to cross over Ooh. with, like Belle and Ariel? Belle and Ariel meet Shuri. Something like that. Oh, that's <laughs> fun. Ooh. Oh my God. Belle and Ariel go to Wakanda. <laughs> well, you know, in, in my fantasy, I think Belle should be Scarlett Johansson of Black Widow. <laughs> But no, no. Belle can hold her own. She can I think Belle is more of the uh, Robert Downey genius type, you know, that would yes, discover yes. things and do Tony science. Stark meets Belle. 
That's the crossover <laughs> we need. Well, now yes. I'm now I'm just curious what a Belle and Ariel buddy comedy would look like. <laughs> We've been told that before. We did. Yeah. We did a little special on your, on Jody's Little Mermaid re-release. Yes, we did. We yeah. we need to have our own show. We did, and we I got should. to paint. I got to paint you. That's right. I'm an artist with Disney Fine Art, Beautiful and I got artist. to I got to paint Ariel for this for this. this it's, our, it's our crowning piece in our in our house. This, it's absolutely no, yeah, gorgeous. I did a painting for her. She yes. just gave it to me. I absolutely love it. At D23, she presented us these gorgeous paintings of our princesses and we were all crying like babies and, <laughs> and then it came Aww. in the mail and I unwrapped it and I took everything down and I hung it right up in the middle. <laughs> and she's like texting me pictures and of her. And I took our, a picture of like, look, kitchen. she's Ariel living in the my wall. house. Yeah, yeah, I was happy. I was going to ask, do you guys collect or back, you know, when the movies first came out, were you like collectors of all uh, of the... <laughs> Jody's got the most. Do you have like a storage unit somewhere I just guess. filled? <laughs> we have an entire storage unit because we bought yeah. everything in duplicate. Yeah. With a possibility of having two children. So we bought everything that ever was made for Ariel. Yeah. Ever. And they ever. have two grown-up oh children that are amazing, <laughs> by the way. And, and now they have two full collections of <laughs> Ariel stuff. I want a tour of that. I want They've a tour got of that. They've got and gizmos of plenty. <laughs> both of them have plenty now that they can have for and their And you're going to be seeing both of her kids in film or on Broadway. Her daughter's going to be just like her. She sings like a dream. Yes. Who knows? And her son is this brilliant for yeah. film. Well, he, he actually works, uh, has worked with Disney. He shot our behind the scenes for the 30th anniversary. Oh. And he graduates in May and uh, moves out to L.A. in September to start working out there as an editor. Oh, oh can't believe goodness. he's going to be But so you know far what? Away. Her Amazing. son, I'm going to brag real quick. Before he was three years old, he knew every single instrument in the orchestra and told you what it's, what his... Its well, job course. was where where they sat with the maestro and I mean it was just Michael and I went over I would, there and we're both I like, would expect nothing less. You got an Einstein child. <laughs> it's you just know? because he came to work with us because we homeschooled the kids for 14 years, so he came to work. So and he's looking at he the was 18 months old and he'd be bassoon, contra bassoon, oh. first violin, second violin, third violin, and then he. He would take his baton and he'd move over John Cherry at the Hollywood Bowl and he'd be like, it's my turn. It's Aww. my turn. So he would just start conducting and John would be like, okay, go. And uh, yeah, John would only do that for him. <laughs> he gave him his baton. He's like, here you go, buddy. Amazing. Guys, it pains me to say this, but our time is done here. Bye. Please give a huge applause Thanks for, for Jody Benson us, and everybody. Paige O'Hara. And you guys right. at home, make sure you keep watching Thank Sci-Fi you. here at New York Comic Con. Thank you so much.